Hello and welcome to this training on using analog phones with 3CX. One of the strong points of 3CX is that it's open and you can use a lot of different hardware and one thing that's not an exception like many other IP PBX software based is that you can use a phone, uh, analog phones with the system by using a uh, FXS or ATA box to connect it. And today we have a good old analog phone, plain old analog phone, and we have a SPA 2000 ATA adapter that we're going to use to connect this phone into our 3CX system. All right, before we go ahead and do the setup, we're just going to quickly go over the steps. First of all, we want to find out what FXO, ah, that's wrong. Uh, actually FXS just ignore that uh, mistype there first of all you need to do is find out what FXS will work with 3CX and is recommended and then the second thing you're going to add an extension in 3CX just like a normal SIP phone then the next you'll want to plug your FXS and uh, the phone the FXS into your switch and your phone into the FXS and then configure log into the the uh, device and configure it and then also make a test call and we're all done. So we'll get we'll jump right on in there and do that. Alright, how do we find out what gateways 3CX supports? Well we can go to th uh, the wiki.3cx.com and you'll see the link there. I don't need to say at home forward slash home forward slash supported dash gateways and up here at the top you'll notice there are some that are not recommended by 3CX but they likely can be made to work and then down below we have the recommended and supported recommended being the highest level support supported meaning they kind of work all right so that's you know we want to find out where and this is the place to check with 3CX and just to point out there's a really nice little ATA adapter patent M ATA we just take a look it's a really nice little device in my opinion uh, whoops no. and I'm recording this live so you get all the it's a nice small little ATA that stands between your phone and the IP PBX once again this is not recommended but it is one that does um, the vendor supports it and someone has made it to work alright the first step in getting this going is adding, adding an extension just like normal and pardon my version 6 here on this machine uh, but we just want to go in and add an extension just like we normally do and we're going to add extension 250 and I won't make you go through all the details there but we're going to add we'll add that extension and uh, get that step taken care of alright we added the extension you'll notice right over here um, this is our live system we use the 200 range for our test phones as you can see there's a couple in there um, but Right over here we added two, extension 250 for the old phone that we're going to add into our system. So we added the extension and now we'll move on to the next step. In 3CX we added the extension and you note there it is not, not registered. So. Alright, here's our equipment once again. I'll get my pointer out of the way. And we have the AT&T. I just thought I'd quickly go over it before we plug it in. This is the uh, analog side, and we'll note this this ATA has ports for two different phones can be plugged and run off this ATA. And there's an, an, a status light to show if the phone is being used at the moment. And if we switch to the other side, um, we have a Cat5 connector to plug into your switch so that it can connect to your 3CX box or your your IPPBX, and also the power cord. So we're gonna and on the bottom there, there's not really much to see. It looks like you can mount it, but okay. We're not doing a review on this ATA. All right, so first of all, we're going to plug in plug in the power. And we'll plug in the Cat5 cable. And we decided to make everything red in this implementation, including the Cat5 cable. All right, and you'll notice we've got some lights blinking here. I'm sure we do in the back. Yes, sure enough, the green light's blinking. And that is the Ethernet activity light. And then we're going to plug our telephone in, just like we would plug into an analog port. And we're going to plug that in port 1, phone 1. Oh, upside down. Flip that right side up. Plug it in there. 
All right, so now we're plugged in. And we really have all the plugins right there now. All right, so now we're going to move into the uh, interface uh, and do that. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do to log into the ATA adapter is find out what the IP address is so you can do it. Now, if you have a brand new one, you're probably good because you can just go ahead and use the default default IP address. But if you're not that uh, privileged, excuse me, um, what you can do, at least on the SPA model here, the Sapira model, or the SPA, you can dial asterisk, 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 at four asterisks, and then one, one, zero pound and it will tell you in an audio voice back what the IP address is. So that's a nice slick feature and I used that on ours, dialed it in and uh, on the phone, the analog phone that's plugged into it and it gave me the IP address of 1.36 so I typed that in and we're in. I, there was no, uh, this adapter did not have a uh, login so I didn't have to worry about that. You can, I'm sure you can turn that on. All right, so then what you're going to want to do is you're going to follow the 3CX configuration for it. And in this particular model, I think we can use, there is a configuration. Oh, did I switch on there? Oh, I'm good. Okay, let's go back. All right, and if you go to that, that address we said before, and then you can pick the... Uh, the device that you that you have and we have a Sapira Spa so I'm just gonna click on that page and then it will give you the the setup how you set up your your phone just scroll down there and it gives you the steps really the key steps and I'm just gonna close that and go back to our Sapira is click on line and you're gonna need to turn on that that line is enabled because remember this this unit has two lines Yes, so we turned that on, and uh, we want to type in the IP address of the uh, IPPBX, or 3CX, and then down here, extension that we set up in 3CX, password, I just type extension again, and again, extension again, and that should get us going. That should get us going. So we'll click submit down here. And uh, I'm not going to make you wait on that. All right, and we'll switch over to 3CX once again. Take a look at our old phone, and sure enough, it's registered. So that means that we should be able to call this phone. So let's do a test there. Just a second. All right, back with the video feed from outside the computer. All right. So we have the phone system here. We're just going to call and see if we can call our extension 250. And I'll do that on my trusty little uh, Snom M3. 250 and dial. And sure enough, it rings. All right. So we have, um, looks like we have a, this uh, analog phone registered. All right, and we'll make a phone call here. And another nifty feature on this good phone is we have a volume right on our handset. Figured you might want to know that. All right, and we'll call our ex other extension over here. Okay, that extension was busy. But we should be able to one, two, one. One. Okay, and you hear in the background that I can call that extension too. All right, so we have a registered phone, and I did check, and we have audio both ways also. So looks like we have it registered correctly. All right, well, thank you for watching this uh, training. I hope it was beneficial. Once again, you might have interest in seeing my blog, and so you can you can just. Um, and I think I need to point that way if I want to point over to where that will be. But there is a link with this video for my blog that a lot of people find interesting related to 3CX items. Um, so hopefully it was beneficial and wish you the best.